like you said, this is a good, um, you're, you're understanding how people actually live their life. I laugh because I said COVID for my wife. Got to be honest, really hasn't changed much. She's good. Still binge watching, you know. Uh, she has her shows. She's happy. Sends Some me to the grocery are. store. You know? <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> uh, for everybody that's joined, hey, how you doing? Grab your coffee. Ohad and I are just going to sit here and literally shoot the shit for about another minute before we start, and then we will, and then we will jump in. And uh, everybody, thank you for congratulating me on my new role, which I put in my LinkedIn profile that I'm now the host for this morning show because that drives up views. But now everybody wants to congratulate me. And so you're going to hear pings all throughout this damn thing. I've turned off <laughs> notifications and LinkedIn doesn't give a shit. So <laughs> this has been nonstop. <laughs> are, you, are you getting the standard congrats or are you getting something yes. a little bit more bespoke? Uh, you know, those that really care are giving me something a little bit more bespoke. So it's okay. nice. So I know you care if you just don't say congrats. But for the love of God, for the next 30 minutes, can you please quit sending me messages that I am I'm now the host of a 30 minute show on LinkedIn Live that, you know, <laughs> I'm good. You really don't have to congratulate me on it. I'm I, I'm good. Can you tell I, I didn't sleep well last night? Can you tell Ohad? I'm just grumpy. Not at all, man. Coffee's yeah, <laughs> this is a normal mood for Ohad. <laughs> it's just all right. People are jumping in, everybody. Thanks for those jumping in. Let us know where you're at in the world. Comment, hit that like button, like it's going out of style. I just did. Um, drop the comments in. <clears throat> Let Ohad know how absolutely stunning he is. Um, and and, and New what shirt. a masterful. Masterful commentator is hello Brian from Jack Henry, Corey LeBlanc. Hello in Louisiana. Corey will be on I think tomorrow or the next day. Corey is no offense to you, Ohad, because I love you. Corey's a stunning man. Uh, just like Cassie <laughs> knows that Corey's got like the sleeve tattoo. He's he's got a look. Oh, and Corey, just so you know, that great pick of you that Cassie has, where it looks like a 19th century general in Prussia. I'm using that. So there you go. I will talk to Cassie, have that up. But now it's all you, Ohad. I'm, I'm all hey, about you. The so thing that stuck with me last time we met is that you said I looked like your Uncle David. I don't know, you David. Still look like my Uncle David that raised there, me. There you go. Uh, there. It's just, it's shocking. All right, everybody. Good morning. It's, what is today? Today is? Seventh? The seventh? The, yeah, it's Tuesday. There you go. I had to think of what day. That's how bad COVID is, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. It's Tuesday. Welcome to the seventh episode of FinTech Insider, the Breakfast Show US. This is a show from the folks from 11FS. We're bringing you interesting insights into FinTech and banking landscape. Again, we've changed our schedule. We're going to start at 1030 a.m. Eastern time. For British friends, that's 330. Um, for Europe, that is 430. For Asia, it's the next day or something like that. I'm Sam Mall, 11FS Managing Director in North America. I'm your host. The ideas were all cooped up together. This is the chance for us to kick off our mornings, have a nice little brunch on the East Coast and chat with some of the some of my favorite people that are in the space. And I love that Ohad has the volume up so I can hear myself talking. Ohad, come on, man. Dude, I can hear myself through the mic. So any really? chance I get to slam Ohad for the next oh God, I don't know, 30 minutes, I'll be happy. So let us let us talk to my uncle David lookalike, Doppelganger. Ohad Samat is the CEO and co-founder of True Accord. We're going to talk about what True Accord is, um, how it came about. And, man, we're going to talk about debt collection because uh, an Ohad, <laughs> to have a company that's probably in a space that is going to get so much focus now for the next God knows how long. Um, it, right? It, it, it's not like True Accord hasn't been around for quite a while, but... Um, the attention, I'm sure your phone is just ringing off the hook right now and the attention that you're getting. So let's start there. Um, one, let's start with where are you in the world? Yeah, first I gotta say is your uncle David, I'm very proud of you. You've grown up very much. Uh, and now being uh, the, the host of a live show, that's, uh, my family is proud, Sam. Yeah, my family uh, is very proud. If you ever met my uncle David, you would not like that uh, <laughs> <laughs> analogy. Uh, or, or that, that, yeah, he's a good man. Gr good, grumpy old man, which you will grow into. So where are you at, Ohad? What part of the world? I'm in Stockholm. Uh, I'm in my basement in Stockholm, uh, 
I, I enjoy the non, not commuting life. Everybody's online. This is my life, man. They're on social media. They're on Slack. I get to talk to everyone. I don't know. Come to me. Come back in a month. Maybe I'll change my mind. But so far, so good. What I love about Ohad, uh, for those that uh, uh, don't follow him on Twitter yet, start following him on Twitter. Um, because the sarcasm level is through the roof. He is funnier than hell. I can't remember what conference you were at, but you like live tweeted throughout the entire conference one time on Twitter, and I could not stop laughing. So if you get anything out of this, follow Ohad just for the snark, just for the comments and sarcasm. Why Stockholm? Why are you in Stockholm right now? Uh, I am in Stockholm because uh, I, I used to work at Klarna. I was Klarna's chief risk officer. They acquired my previous company and uh, met my wife. And long story short, you marry a Swede, uh, you you live in Sweden <laughs> most of the time. So here we are. We have nine, two, two sweet young kids. My wife is uh, uh, works for uh, as a partner in a VC firm in London. So another reason to be in Europe. Here we are. It's working out. Got good executives running the business. I visit about half of my time when when we're not quarantined. So I kind of it's a, it's a nice respite. I, I appreciate it. So doing that commute from Stockholm to San Francisco, that's that's nice flight, good air miles, good for you. Yeah, and Kansas City where we have our operation center. I did not know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. I spent a decent amount of time in that part of the world. So Dude, next people time are I'm sleeping there. on Kansas City. Yes, it's one of the next big metros. It's an amazing place. Great people. Uh, great food. I mean, yeah, beyond agree. the barbecue, people don't realize it. A burgeoning startup uh, scene. Uh, there's a bunch of good people there. There's uh, Zach who just joined Bond out of there. I mean, a bunch of good good stuff to, to do there. And yeah, don't come and hire my people, but you know, it's a good place. <laughs> yeah, you just gave away a secret. I agree with you, man. Kansas City definitely um up and coming and and we see that across the us it's you know areas like nashville right which are starting to boom you know yeah. we, we hear about austin we hear about you know um, denver boise denver. yeah but man there's so many places that are picking up it's it's a bit ridiculous yeah. all right so let's let's jump in about true accord because this is a company that i've personally been following for a while like i said i've i've, I've known ohad for a while and this is a company that i think does solve a massive problem and, and a gap that that bluntly that exists in the in the US right now. So what is True Accord? Give us the 30 second blurb of what True Accord is. What you yeah. Do. So True Accord basically offers machine learning based, digital first, mobile first collection services. So we replace the traditional model of collection based call center based collection agencies, people who call and get people on the line. Someone called this harassment. I will say under the best circumstances, it's just not a great user experience. We explain, uh, replace it with email and text first, personalized, low frequency, meaning like a few times a week, max, um, mobile, optimized, do it whenever you want, negotiate whenever you want, based communication. Think about like an automated sales and marketing campaign for debt collection and consumers engage with us. They pay a lot more with us than they do with a traditional collection agency because the UX is easier, but also because they enjoy it. And you can read our Google reviews. They're pretty shocking in a positive way. It's a high NPS, high CSAT service that banks and lenders and even e-commerce e e companies are using, um, both as a third party, meaning the late stage collections, and as a first party early stage collections. And we have a bunch more stuff that are coming out uh, because of COVID and others. But yeah, that's it's a market that people are not thinking about very often now, a lot more than ever. And even in good times, it's tens of millions of people impacted by collections every year in the US and now even more. And these people deserve a better service. They deserve a high NPS and highly personalized service that really works for them and improves their financial lives. And also the financial institutions, you, you wanna give people the best service possible while collecting as much money as possible just by giving people customized solutions. So that's what we do. We bridge that gap. We bring that technology and service into this market. Um, and and uh, I'll put this politely, Ohad is not blowing smoke when he talks about this. If you go out and look at some of the reviews and comments. So again, he's interacting with people that have gone into collections, yep. right? So already the situation is not great when that phone call and when that contact is coming. 
But the fact that you have these people that are in that situation giving great reviews for the product that you have, for the engagement that they had, that says everything. Yeah, that, thank you for that. And yeah, you read some of the reviews and people are actually writing, I can't believe I'm recommending a collection agency, which is, it's true. And it's yeah. that, you know, when we haven't paid them. It's not us. It's actually people who've used the service and this is what they're writing. You can read the BBB reviews. And plus, you know, our vision is way beyond being the best debt collection agency out there, although it's very important. That's how you create a relationship with the consumers. But people need help getting out of debt and nobody has found a way other than us to build a service that actually reaches all of these consumers and really services them. So when they come to us and say, hey, I love this product, uh, but I have three other debts that people are like aggressively calling me about and I don't know what to do with it. Can you help me? We said yes. And so later this week or early next week, we will be launching a new direct-to-consumer product that actually helps consumers do exactly that, deal with their other debts in collection. So we have a broader vision here, but uh, it's good to be, I mean, the the credit cycle was going to turn no matter what. Unfortunately, it's in this way, you know, nobody wants it to happen. I would love it for to end right here and right now. But as long as people need help, we're around. And as long as banks are dealing with, and lenders are dealing with defaults and forbearance and collecting all the results of this craziness with COVID and the market shutting down, we're basically the only at scale, high performant, highly compliant technology provider and technology based service out there. So just to level set for everybody who's watching, um, to give you a sense of what it's like in the US right now. So yesterday, uh, Janet Yellen, so she's the former Federal um, Reserve Chairman, uh, said she believes that our second quarter GDP could decline up to 30% and that unemployment is probably already around 12 to 13%. The, the official unemployment number, I believe is 4.4%. Um, but I mean, the numbers come out, I think Thursday, most are expecting a, again, a ridiculous number. Last week we had 6.6 .6 million um, file for the first time the week before that 3.3 million. So the, the bottom line is, a service like what True Accord provides is going to become more and more prevalent, more and more needed by all of by, by you. I mean, Jamie Dimon, CEO of Chase, yesterday came out and said we're, we're facing a bad recession, financial stress, like we saw in two thousand and eight. Yeah, and so, people have said COVID is launching; it's it's accelerating the future. And yeah. if people think so, first and foremost, I mean, I don't think people think about defaults. I think people are thinking, well, maybe, you know, this is going to go, this is going to blow over, give people a little bit of uh, uh, forgiveness and the government's going to help. That's, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And in a few weeks to a month, people are going to realize that defaults are chasing them. And then, unfortunately, some are going to say, well, these guys, the consumers, uh, we need to, we need to jump at them. We need a call center that's going to call them aggressively. And the answer is no, it's absolutely untrue. One, because people don't deserve this type of treatment, and two, because data is showing us that giving people customized, personalized payment options and a digital first treatment just collects better, 30 to 50% better in uh, in recoveries in late stage, um, roll rates reduced by up to 50% in early stage, just by offering this omni-channel communication that's really personalized. Yeah, don't don't subject your consumers to like panic-driven solutions. Just think about it in advance. Let's help people, whether they're not paying their rent, whether they need forbearance on their mortgage, whether they're missing payments on their credit cards or their loans. I mean, it's going to be a big problem. Um, Derek Sutton from AutoBooks, who was on last week, just asked the question: uh, What's a typical profile of the type of businesses that use True Accord? So, who are your who are your clients? We're predominantly in unsecure consumer finance. So credit cards, consumer loans, auto loans, um, student loans are very big. And I can't, can't say who our clients are, but some of the biggest credit card issuers out there, some of the biggest banks and super regionals out there, uh, some of the leading fintech companies uh, doing POS financing and others, and even some e-commerce players because SMBs also owe money and need to be uh, serviced. And so again, if you have a question, jump on the comments um, on LinkedIn. Let me know. I will get to those. Tell us hi. Definitely click the like, click the like button. Um, let us know where you're at. We we will get to the questions. Um, 
Yeah. So, so to your point, um, I, I actually came prepared with some research. You'd be proud of oh. me. So, in the U.S., this now this is dated. Now, this is what's scary. But yes. when you think about U.S. debt, on average, um, each household has a credit card carries about eight thousand three hundred and ninety-eight dollars in credit card debt. Mm. Damn. Average student debt is, I think, twenty-eight thousand, something like that. In, in that Sounds ballpark. Right. Yeah. Um, now, student loans have been, I don't, I think that's been frozen, right? Payments there in the U.S., which I don't remember. Government. I don't know if the Government. private ones. Yeah, federal for sure. That's, and that's a good distinction, actually. That's a massive distinction between the two. Um, uh, a lot of folks have, uh, not a lot, but some have waived rent, mortgage payments, a lot of discussions there. But just the reality is with the numbers we're going to see, the amount of people that go into default, um, it's just going to happen. They come into the situation. My daughter, I've talked about this repeatedly. I have a daughter in Valdosta who was a hairdresser. Um, she's ping, she pinged me. You'd be so happy. Um, oh, hi. She pinged me right as this started at 1029 mm -hmm. AM. She goes, dad, they approved me for unemployment. Um, she is a hairdresser. So you can kind of guess what her, her weekly range is in a smaller <laughs> town, but she said yeah. they're giving me a weekly payment of $125. So if you didn't know, <laughs> $125 for a, a mom with a six-year-old child, right? With a husband who works in retail. Um, yes, they're going to get a government stimulus check or deposit into their account at some point. That's right. a one-time deal. That's a one-time, that's only happening once. Um, she's asking me what bills to pay and in what order. This is a conversation that's happening all across the U.S. right now. It is. And by the way, how do you service these people? But we're talking to some of these major banks. Some of them has their network at to 65% capacity because yeah. companies are closing down. They can't service them. And now those who moved everyone to work from home, what happens, unfortunately, if, if hopefully that doesn't happen, but what happens if people get sick? What happens if someone in their household gets sick? How do we deal with, with 65 to 100% turnover? in collections call centers year over year like how do we do all of that i don't know i, I hopefully thankfully we're not in that position we have a small call center everybody's working from home but how do we service people they're already on the phone for hours on end trying to get the help that they need online services are limited what do we do we hope to play a major part there at least when people are in trouble that's what we've been doing for six years now this, we're this is what we're going to continue to do. So again, this is a, a problem that was already growing like crazy before any of this uh, events happened. So um, I, I guess, Ohad, what I would say is take into account everything <clears throat> that we're looking at. How are you adjusting your approach? Um, are you adjusting your approach? Oh yeah, for sure. So that's the cool thing is that, you know, we service millions, about four and a half million uh, consumers a month right now. And so our ability to impact them without having to retrain people, just launch a feature is really high. So we've done a, a bunch of things. So first and foremost, of course, some con some information about COVID-19, how we're dealing with that and their options, something that people really appreciate, but then immediately start partnering with our existing client or payment plans. So our guidance for what we can offer consumers comes from clients. So we go to them and we say, hey, how about we start offering longer payment plans? Yes, great, we changed that. So already we launched it in the market to the vast majority of consumers, longer payment plans on average. So people can be more flexible. Second, we launched a feature that allows people to self-serve, customize their payment plan. You made, ten, you made five payments, now you can't. You need to push a payment. You need to reduce your payment plan and extend it and so on on your phone whenever you want, do it self-serve from your phone. Uh, and we're just launching more and more of those features to do it via SMS, to do it via, um, uh, via dashboard online, be able to just be in control of what's happening without having to speak to a person and without judgment. Because by the way, even in good times, what we found is by giving people customization, we keep them on payment arrangements that they want to stay on. If someone comes to you and says, hey, I can't pay this next payment, you tell them, no, you got to pay the next payment. What do you think is going to happen? At best, they pay you that one payment because they feel pressured, and then they don't pay you anything else. right? At worst, they go and they complain and so on, rightfully so. right? And so if consumers come to us, we say, as, as much flexibility as we can under the guidelines, 
uh, we're going to give it to you. So a lot has been around that flexibility, more information, reaching people, adjusting to the scale and, and handling just people being very worried. Now, on top of that, we're launching, we're taking to market our early stage collections product that's already in, in market with one client and, and is going into market with others. Basically, the same type of flexibility and functionality for early stage so that instead of just taking all of these phone calls and just leaving people wandering, they'll be able to reach out and get to consumers via email, via text, via uh, you know pre-recorded phone call, uh, via chat, and so on, and just manage that communication, manage hardships, and so on. And the last thing is we are launching, we're going to talk about it next week, we're launching a direct-to-consumer product that helps consumers manage the communications from their perspective. So we're really trying to get our arms around the whole thing. We feel like, you know, we were born for this. This is what we're doing. This yeah. is what we wanted to do. I love that last one. I really do. Um, so Corey LeBlanc, Corey's from Origin Bank, uh, mm -hmm. pretty good sized bank in Louisiana, goes across into Texas, I think into Arkansas too, if I remember right. Corey asked, and this just ties into what you just said, but if you could just dive in a little bit further, mm -hmm. what's True Accord's primary collection method? Is it negotiated amount, term-based payments based on a personalized payment cycle? It sounds like it's, Kind of set up between how the bank sets up that that the dashboard right yeah so we have a, um, a concept of treatments which is basically what the bank says this is what you're allowed to use and this is the extent to which you're you're allowed to use them so if it's in pre-charge off the bank can say well listen day 60 if they don't pay uh, we start reporting to credit bureaus that's the old world i don't know what the policies are now or if there's a car day 70 we start the repossession process so you know we got to keep people informed we got to tell them what's going on uh and in the meantime you can offer them that's the same for post charge off you can offer them up to 80 percent settlement meaning they can pay eight cents uh, 80 cents on the dollar uh and we'll call it squared out and squared away, or you can offer them a payment plan that's maximum 12 months long or 24 months long and so on. And within that, our engine optimizes to offer people uh, declining or raising offers based on their behavior and what they say they need. It turns out that when you give people the agency and then you just ask them, hey, what do you need and why do you need it? They'll tell you and they'll engage with you. <laughs> And then they can offer them something that actually works for them. So <laughs> every show, Ohad, I have mispronounced this guy's name. I'm going to do it again because, you know, but he asks great questions every show. Uh, and, I, and I'm like, his name is said, John. Hey. Yeah, John Sidrahar. <laughs> Slaughtered it again. But dude, I love you. He, This guy, he's a company founder. He asks questions every single day. Do you, nice. guys, you guys buy the loan portfolio from your clients and then try to recover as much as you can? Or do you get a percentage of what you recover for the client? Kind of what's the model that you can dive into there? We are not a debt buyer. So we Good service the debt. Yeah. yeah, listen, I, I got to tell you, there are some very smart, very capable, some of my favorite people in the debt buying business. Uh, it's just not our business. We work with them. So most of them, even the biggest ones, they buy the debt and then they turn around and like throw a cord. You service the debt. Um, and... Yeah, we don't we don't buy, um, and we don't plan to. This is not our business. Our business is the communication, is is working with consumers. Yeah, and I would say, um, especially in times like these, you and I were talking about this right before the show started, right? Um, um, just for everyone so that you know, Ohad broke news to me. I had no clue that M-Pesa had been acquired. It was news to me because mm. I've been, I was prepping for this show, Ohad, um, doing actual <laughs> research. But I, that was news to me. And uh, one great move by Safaricom and Vodafone, in my opinion. Great job. Good for M-Pesa. Um, consolidation is coming. Yeah. We're going to, and that's, I think that was the point, right? We are going to see consolidation. We're going to see companies, good Lord, uh, the M&A, the consolidations. What we're going to see as, as, as different companies have to go through this, this very rough period that we're going to be going through. Uh, within the fintech space, I expect to see that. And I think the fact that what you just said, you don't buy the debt, you don't own that debt, puts you in a, <laughs> let's be blunt, put you in a pretty good position um, going into something like this. Um, that exposure would be tough right now. Yeah, we don't have the exposure. Some of our clients have the exposure, but you know, debt buying is a little bit of a different business than lending. Um, 
But we were just informed today with one of our biggest uh, traditional kind of counterparts or, or competitors just gone under, giving people, you know, the letter and, uh, and, is, and is shutting their doors. It's, it's hard to manage an operating, a servicing business in this environment. I mean, EBIT margins are single percentages as it is, even in good times. Yeah. And some companies just spend half the year not profitable and just making money in the half of the year when people have money. Um, it's not an easy business to, 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 to build. And so building a technology business in it has been, it's been a journey. I'm happy we were gotten to, but it's taking time. Um, so, um, last question for me, um, I thought 30 minutes flies, man. It absolutely <laughs> flies. It yeah, does. Um, I, I don't want to call this a prediction. Um, what are you, what are you bracing for? I mean, what do you think the next say month to two months will look like? Um, for the U.S., especially, I'll give you mine. Okay, I'm expecting mm -hmm. the numbers Thursday to be god awful. The unemployment numbers. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm expecting. I'm definitely expecting us to approach 15 to 20 percent unemployment, um, which sounds god awful. I believe in the Great Depression in 1933, the highest unemployment rate we saw was just 24.83 percent. I did that off the top of my head, folks. Mm -hmm. It took five years to get there. Five years. Um, to get, or it's from 1929 to 1933. That's four years math. Kai in London, don't make fun of me. I suck at math. Um, but it took a while to get to that number. We're approaching that in just a matter of weeks here in the US. Um, so I see, I definitely see the volume and number of people that are going to go into some level of debt collection to be a bit um, staggering, um, yeah. to, to be blunt. So we actually had a question asked, which I think ties into my little prediction. Veronica asked this, how does debt collection process affect credit scores of your clients? Uh, yeah. Good question. Well, first I want to say, um, not saying, you know, I'm super optimistic, but I just also yeah. want to recognize the, the good things that are happening. You know, people moving into yeah. action, large systems moving into action, people showing their they're true positive colors. I mean, there are good things to, to, to out there if you're looking for them. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to forget that. American um, Banker had the story out today, which, by the way, quoted me. Uh huh. Good okay. advance. You like that? It was a. It was a horrible quote. I, I got one little line. I mean, <laughs> and it wasn't even that good. That's not like a moron. It was good. Penny Crossman wrote a good article just about that. Who's yeah. doing what? There's a lot of positive things happening within the fintech and banking community. We're yeah. seeing a ton of people step up. So yeah. go ahead, Ohad. Yeah, me. on credit scores, uh, we don't report. Some of our clients do. Uh, and so usually when um, when people get to the, in the early stage, their credit score can still be good and we're focused on getting them back on track and curing them. In the late stage, when they get to us, usually their credit score is already shot. They owe money to three, four different companies. And it's about saying, well, you know, it's not, it's not your fault. It's you're in the situation. We're in it together. How do we figure it out, right? So it's less about let's worry about your credit uh, report. It's less about I'm being bombarded by four different companies and like help me feel like I'm not sinking, and let me start. Let me start turning my life around. And then in six months we can start thinking about what life looks after that. So maybe for me and for us that are constantly dealing with this level of of crisis, you know, I constantly start try to think about what's after this. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna get pretty bad, and I think a few people are gonna be super panicked, and some people are, are maybe not acting now who should be acting now to deal with their defaults and, and growing numbers in in collections, and realizing that their contingency plans for call centers just don't work when everybody's working from home, and they should actually think about using technology and so on. I'd love to talk to them, but also we need to think about what's happening in six months from now. And we're going to need to help a lot of people get back into work, get back on track, pay their debts, and so on. And that's the play. That's the the role that we're playing. So we're we actually are up against it. And Veronica from Truist who asked that question. Um, uh, again, hopefully that answered uh, everything you needed there. If not, we'll dive in a little bit later um, in a follow up. But uh, folks, we're up against the clock. For once, I'm trying to be on time. I've never been on time. <laughs> it over. Oh, hot. Go figure. Uh, thank you all so much for the questions. Let, let um, uh, your friends know about the show. I know that we've had a consistent group that's constantly <laughs> tuning into this and the questions um, have been great. And I think you can see that the type of people we're having on are great. 
Uh, to be totally blunt, the way I met Ohad was through his wife, meaning I interviewed his wife because she was a rock star at the time at Klarna before she moved into BC. I didn't care about Ohad. <laughs> there you go, Ohad. You were just, you know, you were after the fact. You know, I married up. Married. I'm not ashamed of it. And on the contrary. Did, man. I, I will back that up. He definitely married up. And now that you've seen Ohad live, he looks like my Uncle David. He definitely married up. I love you, dude. But man, um, good for you. Ohad, for everyone that watched, where's the best place? One, to follow you. What's your Twitter um, profile? And then True Accord, more importantly, how do they get in touch with you about True Accord? Yeah, so my my uh, Twitter is Ohad Summit, my full name, at Ohad Summit. Uh, my email is Ohad, O-H-A-D, at TrueAccord.com. Exactly how you hear it, T-R-U-E-A-C-C-O-R-D.com. And our website is TrueAccord.com. Check us out and let's talk. There's a lot to be done in the coming months. Man, there is. Uh, talk to them. Uh, it, I, I will 100% back up True Accord. Great company. The product is fantastic. Uh, just read the reviews, and I'm not joking. They speak for themselves. Okay, folks, I'm out of time. Uh, Sam All, at Sam All, follow us on Love NFS. Put this on your calendar. It's 1030 every day. I, we have guests lined up for, God, I think five, six weeks at this point. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have Corey LeBlanc, the legendary Corey LeBlanc, the chief digital innovation officer at Origin Bank, the tattooed banker. He'll have a cool ball cap on, probably, something like that. So definitely tune in. Everybody, thanks for watching. See you Thanks, tomorrow. everyone. Have a good day. Is that a lot?